If you have a resin printer and you don't have a UV curing station, that seems like printing in the dark ages. I'm gonna show you how I build this UV curing station with a turntable, very reasonably priced, a little bit of DIY out of foam core. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Alfred backpack hanger in stainless steel and aluminum designed by me. Holds your backpack, lets you charge your phone, holds your keys, super versatile. So I'm packing up some here that were recently sold. Thanks for those of you who've purchased recently. It really helps support the channel. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They offer full 3D printing services. So if you don't currently own a resin printer or you're thinking about upgrading and that's why you're watching this video but still need SLA parts, PCBWay is an excellent choice. I use them all the time for my specialty SLA parts. Link in the description below. As with most design projects, I'll begin this one with a quick sketch. The sketch allows me to visualize what it is that I'm building and help me anticipate any pitfalls that I might have so that I can avoid them. Essentially, this is a box with rounded corners and a door that opens that allows me to put the resin parts on the inside. The corners are rounded as it will allow me to wrap the LEDs in the corner versus square corners, which would be difficult and will also help the light bounce around on the inside and prevent it from being trapped inside the corners and help the part cure. For this build, I'm gonna use half inch or 12 millimeter foam core, and I'm gonna cut out the top and the bottom first. I happen to own a laser, so I'm gonna use the laser to help me scribe the shape out onto the foam core as it will be much easier and quicker and way more accurate. The laser will also give me the circumferential distance around the outside of my box, and this will be very useful for building the walls as well. The laser doesn't cut all the way through, and then I just finish cutting that with my X-Acto to get the final shape. Once the top and the bottom are cut out, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna rabbit out a half inch of material all around the outside. This means that I'm gonna leave the top and the bottom layer of the paper and remove the half inch or the 12 millimeters all around the edges. This is gonna allow the walls to go into that spot and get a nice transition so that there is no foam showing on my model and I can get a nice clean part. Here I'm just scraping away the excess foam that didn't come out when I peeled it away so that I can set the walls in on the outside perimeter of this perfectly. Because I know the length of the circumference of the outside of the top and the bottom, this will help me cut out the walls all in one piece. Here I'm going through and I'm making little V cuts in the areas that are the corners. This is gonna allow me to bend the walls in the corners and have all four corners, including the door, out of one piece. Once I have the walls all cut and scored, now I'm gonna cut a hole in the bottom. And this is where my turntable is gonna go and I'm gonna be using a microwave motor here and a turntable that I've built in a previous video. So I'm gonna remove all the material in the middle so I can drop my turntable in there, make a little cutout for the cord, and let's hot glue in the sides that we built, put them in place. I use some tape to hold everything together so that the shape stays correct. Put some hot glue on the top and put the lid on, and it's pretty much together. We use the tape to hold it in place while the glue sets up. A little bit of trimming so the door opens and closes correct. I 
I'm gonna apply aluminum foil to the inside of this box. This is gonna do a couple of things for me. It's gonna allow the light to be bounced around and it's gonna keep the light inside the box because the UV would come through the foam and we don't want that. Now I use some spray adhesive on my aluminum foil to attach it to the inside of the box. It's a little bit tricky, but well worth it. We're gonna line the top as well. And this will also give me a good surface to adhere the LEDs to. I'm gonna use some LEDs that have the correct wavelength to cure your resin prints. Check the resin manufacturer and what they recommend. I'm gonna use about 15 meters of LEDs inside of here and my LEDs come with a power supply and I'll link to something like that below. I install the LEDs on, meaning, so if I mess something up and they stop working, I know that I've made some sort of an error or something has happened. So I leave the LEDs plugged in when I attach them to the inside of the box. I wanna talk a little bit about the plans for this box. This is definitely a version of what they built on Tested. Um, and they go through many of the same steps and materials. This is of course a modified version where they stick it in some sort of an enclosure. My enclosure is a little bit slicker because of the rounded corners and I feel gives a little bit better coverage. But essentially I'm copying down to even some of the components what they used on tested so if you need to go back and see and hear them talk and gab a little bit more about how they do their build feel free to do that but I'm basing this build on what I saw on the tested website now let's attach the turntable and for this I solder on two little clips so that I can attach them onto the motor soldering free floating not real easy let's resolder this one and then we'll put a little cover on the outside of it so that they can't touch together but everything here is 110 volts with its power supply so there's really not a lot to do electrically just kind of plug everything in and I use everything kind of off the shelf so it's just plug and play and you don't really have to do too much custom electronic work. Let's add a little knob onto the door so that it's easy to open and close the door. Just some good ergonomics. And then we're gonna put in a little magnet here. And this is from an old display box from like one of those cell phone cases that have little magnetic enclosures. And this allows the door to kind of snap shut and actually stay shut. So trapping the UV light inside of the box. Additionally, I also need to make a gasket here between the door and the left side of the box. And I'm literally sticking two pieces of white artist tape together. And then I'm taking that tape and I'm gonna tape it onto the edge of the door in kind of a, like a flap configuration so that it takes up the space between the door and the edge of the box. It flexes, but creates a seal to keep the light inside. I wanna mount the timer and the electronics on the top of the box, just like in the sketch. So in this case, I'm using this little countdown timer. Yes, the same one that they used on the tested video. It's plug and play. And I just plug in a little adapter on the side so that I can plug in the turntable and the lights. And they're all controlled from this timer. My goal here is to have things to be stable and attached to the unit so I can move it around and I don't have cables flopping around and stuff falling off the box or things dangling off the sides. I want this to be much more like a regular product so that it's all self-contained and it's plug and play. So here We'll just make a little support for the power supply for the LEDs and plug in 
the turntable in the back so that when we push the button, it will all turn on at the same time. A little bit of cable management goes a long way and everything is all self-contained, nice and neat. So there's not messy wires everywhere. I'll add a little bit of aluminum foil with some spray mount to the top surface of the turntable. Make sure that you build your curing station big enough to cure even the largest of prints and allow for expansion in the future. As a reference, it took me about eight hours to build this, all the DIY components. Of course, I purchased stuff ahead of time and planned everything out, but very reasonably priced with the foam core and the components here, probably less than 50 bucks. All right, next, coming up, watch me score a goal. Guy in the green shirt and white helmet shooting the puck. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.